Our planet holds many secrets of the past, which we only learn about thanks to one of the most interesting sciences, archaeology. In this video, I invite you to get acquainted with the most mysterious and sensational discoveries of scientists. Enjoy watching. In 2019, scientists managed to do something nearly impossible. They recreated the perfume used by one of the most beautiful women in human history, Cleopatra. As the Queen of Egypt, Cleopatra devoted much time to self-care and used the best cosmetic products of her time. According to legend, when the Egyptian queen visited her lover Mark Antony in Tarsus in 41 BCE, she ordered her ship's sails to be so heavily scented with her favorite perfume that her presence could be felt long before the ship reached the shore. In 2012, archaeologists from the University of Hawaii, Robert Littman and Jay Silverstein, near the ancient Egyptian city of Mendez, discovered several amphorae containing a little of Cleopatra's very perfume. This perfume was called Mendesian scent. It was popular among other wealthy Egyptian women as well, so archaeologists were able to find its recipe. Of course, the scientists decided to conduct an experiment during which they managed to recreate the famous ancient perfume. Its composition included ingredients ingredients such as date palm oil, myrrh, cinnamon, and pine resin. The fragrance turned out to be quite spicy and moderately sweet, perhaps somewhat resembling the one Cleopatra adored. Until recently, the relationships between Neanderthals and Denisovans were known to science, but the details of communication and interbreeding of their ancestors remained unknown. Therefore, the latest discovery literally shocked scientists. The common ancestors of Denisovans and Neanderthals separated from the Sapiens branch about 750,000 years ago, after migrating to the territory of Eurasia. Apparently, there they met with more ancient hominins and began to interbreed with them. Traces of this archaic genome were found in the DNA of later Neanderthals and even modern Europeans. Professor of Anthropology at the University of Utah, Alan Rogers, talked about how he and his team spent a long time comparing the DNA of modern and primitive humans to understand where this unknown genome came from. By identifying common fragments, scientists began to model various scenarios of how these genes could have arisen and spread. As a result of the experiment, Roger's team was able to recreate the picture of the relationships and migrations of our ancestors. The first hominins left Africa about 1,900,000 years ago, after which various archaic homo species spread throughout Eurasia. About 700,000 years ago, this path was followed followed by Denisovans and Neanderthals. On the new continent, they split up. The oldest found remains of Neanderthals are dated to about 430,000 years ago. Gradually, the population of these species' ancestors began to decrease, and the encounter with more archaic hominins helped continue the lineage. According to Roger's experiment results, it became clear that Neanderthals received about 2% of genes from these unknown primitive human species. When Neanderthals and Denisovans began to interbreed with each other, the genes of archaic humans were transmitted and thus have reached our days. The mysterious Beck Chapel was built in the early 14th century in the English county of Durham for one of the most influential bishops of the time, Anthony Beck. Anthony Beck served as a bishop to the king from 1284 to 1310. He faithfully accompanied Edward I on the Crusades and participated in military campaigns in Scotland. Beck also had authority over an army, could mint his own coins, and even briefly ruled in place of the king. Now you understand how influential Anthony Beck was. Later, Beck Chapel passed to the leader of the opposition against Charles I, Sir Arthur Hazelrig. Despite all its power and value in 1646, Hazelrig decided to demolish it and build a new chapel in its place. Since then, Beck Chapel had been lost, but 370 years after its destruction, a team of archaeologists from Durham University managed to find the ruins of this legendary building. During the five-month excavation, researchers discovered a unique black plaster floor and side buttresses, one and a half meters thick and 12 meters wide. In addition, fragments of stone columns and a stone vault with stained glass windows were preserved at the site, one of which depicted the traditional Christian symbol of Christ's self-sacrifice, a pelican pecking its own breast. Thanks to this discovery, experts were able to partially reconstruct the appearance of the chapel. According to them, it exceeded the size of the King's Chapel in Westminster. 
In 2018, during an exploration of the depths of the Black Sea near Bulgaria, scientists accidentally discovered a sunken ship with ancient drawings. To study the ship in detail, researchers did not need to bring it up from a depth of 2,000 meters. Instead, they made high-quality photographs of the find and took several material samples from which the ship was made. According to the initial assessment of experts, the age of the ship was 2,400 years. However, after carbon analysis, it became clear that the ship dates back to the 5th century BCE. Surprisingly, Despite such a long stay at depth, the ship's 23-meter hull, mast, rudder, and rowing benches were well-preserved. This ship was one of those that sailed in ancient times between the shores of the Mediterranean. Thanks to this discovery, scientists gained more knowledge about shipbuilding, trade, and the ways people moved in those times. To date, this sunken ship is considered the oldest among all those ever found. During excavations in the Turkmen Karahoyuk region in southern Turkey, American archaeologists discovered an ancient lost city that existed from approximately 1400 to 600 BCE. The scientists reported that the find is sensational and indicates the existence of a previously unknown ancient kingdom. Initially, researchers only found clay pottery, but later they came across a large stone with inscriptions in the Luwian language, which was prevalent in this region during the Bronze and Iron Ages. Experts managed to decipher the inscriptions, which spoke of King Hartapu's victory over Phrygia, where King Midas ruled at that time. The name King Midas is associated with mythology. According to legends, Dionysus offered Midas any gift, and the king chose the ability to turn everything he touched into pure gold. However, this gift became his curse, as he could neither eat nor drink. Dionysus then took pity on Midas and freed him from the gift after the king bathed in the Pactolus River. Interestingly, tiny gold particles can still be found in this river. The real historical King Midas ruled Phrygia in the 7th century BCE. He is known to have been defeated in a war with the Cimmerians, after which he took his own life by drinking bull's blood. However, the latest find casts doubt on this historical fact. Scientists speculate that King Hartapu, whose victory was inscribed on the stone, ruled an unknown kingdom. Who these people were, what their culture and religion were, remains for historians to discover. In southwestern Peru, in the Pisco Basin at the foothills of the Andes, scientists from five countries discovered the remains of an astonishing ancient animal, a four-legged whale. The new species of protocetids was named Paragocetus pacificus. Thanks to the well-preserved remains, scientists were able to recreate the appearance of these whale ancestors. The structure of the whale's tail vertebrae is similar to the vertebrae of beavers and otters. It is likely that ancient whales actively used their tails for swimming. Unlike their modern relatives, these individuals had four short legs with small hooves. This allowed the animals to inhabit both water and land. However, due to the peculiar structure of their legs, they could not move quickly on land. So they only came ashore during mating and birthing periods. Prehistoric animals were armed with a well-developed mouth with sharp teeth, which helped them handle large prey. The length of the terrestrial whales could reach 30 meters. These protocetid species lived on Earth more than 42 and a half million years ago. Initially, terrestrial whales inhabited Africa, then migrated through the Atlantic Ocean to South America, and later reached the Atlantic Ocean. This discovery allowed scientists not only to study a new species of prehistoric animals in detail, but also to learn the roots of their migration. In 1996, a wealthy Dutch collector decided to restore his unique exhibit, an ancient Buddha statue. The restorer was tasked with fixing cracks and repainting the statue. To his shock, when he began work, he discovered something resembling a human inside the valuable object. The statue's owner informed scientists, and it was sent for examination. The investigation of the statue was conducted using computer tomography at the Amersfoort Medical Center. It was revealed that indeed a human mummy was inside the statue. Additionally, ancient Chinese characters were found in the papier-mâché sarcophagus. These helped identify that the mummy belonged to a Buddhist monk from the Chinese meditation school named Liu Quan, who died in the year 1100 of our era. The curator of archaeology at the Drents Museum explained that a mat was found inside the statue, which was 200 years younger than the remains themselves. 
This suggested that the monk's mummy had been in a temple and was worshipped by others for two centuries. Apparently later, the monk's body was placed in a unique sarcophagus in the likeness of Buddha. Scientists speculate that Liu Quan died in the lotus position during prolonged meditation. Chinese monks often practiced self-mummification to achieve enlightenment. Essentially, such a death was equivalent to the ascension of the soul, as the body remained existing on earth. For this purpose, monks adhered to a diet for a long time, eating nuts, berries, pine needles, and resin. During meditation, they exhausted themselves with hunger and did not drink water. This practice was used until the 19th century, but never before had archaeologists found a monk's mummy entombed in a statue. Many of you may be familiar with the tragic history of the ancient city of Pompeii, which was destroyed in 79 of our era by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. Excavations have been ongoing at this site for 200 years. Many ancient artifacts and human remains have been found here, but in March 2018, for the first time, a horse that perished during that very eruption was discovered. The petrified animal was found in a stable on the grounds of one of the wealthy villas. The horse was harnessed. Apparently, it was being prepared for a trip to evacuate, but the disaster outpaced its owner. The horse was found during the first phase of excavations. Nearby was a wooden feeder and parts of another animal. During the second phase of excavations, archaeologists also found the remains of a third horse, fragments of harnesses, and a saddle, decorated with wooden and bronze elements. According to Massimo Osana, director of the Pompeii Archaeological Park, all three horses were of purebred stock. They were much smaller than modern horses. The animals died a terrible death, suffocating under volcanic ash. After the eruption of Vesuvius, tons of lava and ash fell on Pompeii, instantly destroying everything in their path. To recreate accurate replicas of the people and animals that perished during the disaster, scientists pour plaster into the dense volcanic layer where the remains were located. One of the most famous plaster figures is the so-called Orpheus dog. The figure precisely replicates the remains of the deceased dog, including its collar and even fur. The two horses found at the villa were also recreated with plaster. The remains of the third horse were severely damaged by looters. Unfortunately, they managed to dig underground passages to the villa's territory to steal ancient artifacts for subsequent sale. In 2017, during the construction of a school in Zurich, workers made a shocking discovery. A woman was buried inside the trunk of a tree, buried underground. The remains were sent for analysis, which revealed that the woman was 40 years old at the time of death and lived in this area about 2,200 years ago. Scientists were also able to learn some details of her life. DNA analysis showed that the Celtic woman had a fondness for sweets, died a natural death, and never engaged in heavy labor in her lifetime. Her clothing and jewelry indicated that she belonged to a wealthy family. The woman was dressed in a woolen dress and shawl. Her hands were adorned with bronze bracelets and her neck with a necklace of glass beads. A chain with iron buckles and pendants was found on her waist. What puzzled the scientists most was the idea of the unusual coffin, which was carved into the trunk of a tree. Interestingly, in 1903, not far from the burial of the Celtic woman, the remains of a man with a sword and shield also dated to the Iron Age were discovered. The latest find allowed scientists to speculate that these two individuals knew each other in life and could have been a married couple. In 2016, the Virginia Department of Transportation organized excavations on the territory of the 64th Highway. In this place during the Civil War was located Redoubt 9, which was built by Confederate soldiers in the year 1861. Archaeologists planned to find military artifacts here, but instead they discovered a glass jug filled with rusty nails. Similar talismans were used to ward off evil spirits and were called witch bottles. Initially, archaeologists thought that the bottle was intended for storing nails, but those familiar with old English superstitions quickly realized its purpose. In medieval England, people were very afraid of witches. Therefore, as protection against their curses, they often used witch bottles. This talisman was a a glass container filled with various bent, sharp objects, most often pins or nails. Sometimes nails, hair, and even urine were placed in the bottle. Then, to remove the curse, a person buried the glass container in the ground under the hearth. Thanks to the heat, 
The pins and nails straightened and broke the bottle. As soon as the glass shattered, the witch's curse was lifted from the person. The bottle found in Virginia was dated to the 19th century. It was made in Pennsylvania and had dimensions of about 13 centimeters in height and 8 centimeters in width. Most likely, it was buried in the ground by one of the Union soldiers during the capture of the fort to protect themselves from the curses of enemies. Similar artifacts have already been found in many corners of the USA. The city of Acre, located on the Mediterranean coast of Israel, is considered one of the oldest settlements in the region. Its history dates back to the Neolithic era, which was 6,000 years ago. In ancient times, Acre was at the crossroads of international trade routes, so the city was connected to many famous historical events and personalities. In the year 1104, after the First Crusade, Acre was conquered by the crusader Baldwin I. In 1187, the city was taken by the Muslim military leader Saladin. But four years later, Acre returned to the Crusaders. The city was renamed Saint Jean d'Acre and became the capital of the Crusader Kingdom of Jerusalem. It was during this period that the large-scale construction of Acre's fortifications began. The city was located on a peninsula, which was very convenient. It was protected by the sea on three sides and on the fourth by a fortress wall. However, after the appearance of powerful siege engines, this was not enough. So the Crusaders decided to build new fortifications, along with a complex system of underground passages, tunnels, and chambers. Underground were storage facilities, knights' halls, chapels, dining rooms, and royal chambers. Essentially, the underground tunnels were a whole city within which one could save their life during fierce assaults. The existence of the tunnel remained unknown for more than 700 years. However, in 1994, it was accidentally discovered under the house of one of the local residents. Tam Pa Ling Cave, or Monkey Cave, located in northeastern Laos, is known for several remains of primitive humans found during excavations. In June 2023, archaeologists discovered in Monkey Cave the first evidence that Homo sapiens migrated to Southeast Asia about 77 to 86,000 years ago. Associate Professor Kira Westaway from Macquarie University in Australia stated that this discovery is incredibly significant in the history of the study of Tampaling Cave, as it allowed scientists to learn when the first settlers appeared in these lands. Additionally, the find helped determine the routes by which primitives moved through the region. Until recently, it was assumed that the first Homo sapiens arrived in Southeast Asia about 60 to 70,000 years ago. These lands seemed attractive to humans and they quickly began to settle in. For a long time, scientists were interested in studying this topic. Until recently, the movements and interactions of the first settlers with Denisovans remained unexplored. But the latest discovery gave scientists an opportunity to delve deeper into this question. Sometimes, in search of valuable artifacts, archaeologists have to conduct excavations in landfill sites. Such a situation occurred in the Andes, in lands that once belonged to the inhabitants of the Inca village of Iglesia, Colorado. Among the remnants of food and clay pottery, in 2003, researchers discovered four skulls, while no other parts of skeletons or ritual objects were found. For 15 years, this mystery puzzled scientists, but in 2018, Two employees of the National Museum of Natural History in Santiago suggested an explanation for this find. In their opinion, the four skulls served as a stark example of what could happen to those who refused to submit to the rulers. The end of the 14th and the beginning of the 15th century was a period of flourishing for the Inca Empire. During these years, the Incas gradually expanded their borders through the Andes. The warriors of this civilization tried to instill fear in the inhabitants of the settlements that were to be conquered. Therefore, according to the museum employees, they placed several skulls at the entrance to the village. The already frightened and unarmed inhabitants were unlikely to be ready to resist, and the human remains instilled real terror. In 2014, during restoration work at the Tokat Castle in Turkey, secret tunnels and two dungeons were discovered, where, according to scientists, Prince Vlad III, known to the world as Count Dracula, was imprisoned. Turkish archaeologist Ibrahim Ketan, who participated in the excavations, said that the research in the castle revealed that all of Tokat was surrounded by underground tunnels, some of which led to two dungeons. However, it is still unknown in which of them Dracula was imprisoned, 
along with his brother, Radu. Vlad III became the prototype for the main character of Bram Stoker's world-famous novel, Dracula. However, unlike the fictional character, he was an ordinary human and was not associated with vampires. Dracula had a bad reputation in Europe, while in Romania, he is revered as a hero and not without reason. Vlad III fought fierce wars with the Turks throughout his reign, despite his father, Vlad II, trying to gain support from the Ottoman Empire and concluding a peace treaty. Historians believe that the 12-year imprisonment in the dungeons of the Turkish Tokat castle had a negative impact on Dracula's psyche. After returning to his homeland, Vlad III was able to ascend the throne. At that time, he was enraged by the death of his father and brother and sought those responsible for the murder. As a result, he ordered the execution of anyone under his suspicion. According to some sources, the number of those executed reached 20,000 people. Israel's Beit She'arim National Park is known for its large necropolis, where excavations have been ongoing for many years. In 2022, archaeologists discovered an ancient burial there, dated to the second century of our era. This site was the resting place of a certain Jacob the Proselyte. This man lived his entire life in the ancient city of Beit She'arim and died at the age of 60. What most surprised the researchers was not the find itself, but the limestone slab lying next to the burial niche. On it, in red paint like blood, a warning was written in ancient Greek. Jacob the proselyte swears to curse anyone who opens it. Presumably, this was the man's way of ensuring the well-being of his remains in the future. He not only threatened with a curse, but also used red paint making the warning almost impossible to miss. However, this did not help him, and his grave was still plundered. Beit Shearim was a Jewish city in Lower Galilee during the Roman Empire. After the destruction of Jerusalem, it became a center of Judaism. Many philosophers and scholars of that time were buried in the necropolis of this city. The site is well studied by archaeologists. But the catacombs where the unusual grave of Jacob the proselyte was found were discovered only recently, so his burial place could not be saved from looters. In March 2023, British archaeologists discovered a gruesome find, a hair comb made from human skull bone. The unusual artifact was found during excavations near the village of Bar Hill in Cambridgeshire. This region is of great importance to British historians, as about 2,000 years ago, a Roman military garrison was located in the county. Since 2016, more than 280,000 different artifacts have been found here, including the bone comb, named Bar Hill Comb. Research showed that it was carved from a human skull in the Iron Age, making it about 2,000 years old. Moreover, scientists found that the comb was not used for its intended purpose, as indicated by the absence of wear marks. However, a small hole in the center of the artifact suggested that it served as an amulet. Despite the Bar Hill comb being the second bone comb found in Great Britain, the use of human bones as a material was not shocking. Scientists explain that in many regions of Europe, the bones of the deceased were collected and reused. Michael Marshall, a specialist at the Museum of London Archaeology, stated that experts believe the comb was made by people from a local tribe and was an important symbolic item. It was probably carved from the skull of a respected community member as a way to commemorate them. In the Fu Kao Mountains in southern Laos lie the ruins of the ancient Hindu temple Wat Po. An unusual artifact, called the Crocodile Stone, was discovered on the temple grounds. It is a huge boulder with the outline of a crocodile carved on it. No one knows the true purpose of the stone yet, but the fact that a human can fit in this depression allowed scientists to suggest that it was used as an altar for sacrifices. The surviving ruins of the temple date back to the 11th to 13th centuries of our era. However, it is believed that the complex was built even in the 5th century of our era. If the crocodile stone indeed served as a site for sacrifices, then this ritual was definitely carried out during the times when Laos was under the rule of the Chenla Empire. According According to one legend, every year, when the plumeria flowers began to fall, the Chenla king Viravarman sat on the road in front of the temple and prayed to the mountain spirits. After several days of prayer, the king ordered the sacrifice of the two most beautiful girls of the empire. Each was given rice wine and then killed. Perhaps after that, their bodies were placed on the crocodile-shaped altar. 
Interestingly, the history of the Sui dynasty indeed mentions an annual sacrifice performed by the rulers of Chenla. Moreover, the description of the ritual matches the legend. This means that the folklore of the locals was based on real historical events. Sacrifice was one of the religious rituals of many ancient civilizations. Therefore, the crocodile stone could well have been used as an altar for such a ceremony. At the same time, no traces of blood were found on it, so its purpose remains unknown. In ancient times, amazing civilizations lived in the territory of modern Peru, the culture and customs of which remain a mystery to contemporary historians. Chan Chan was the largest city of the pre-Columbian era in South America. It was built by the Chimu civilization in the year 850 of our era. Now in this place, archaeologists are conducting large-scale excavations, during which they recently managed to find 20 creepy statues. The statues were discovered inside the city citadel. Their average height was 70 centimeters. They were made of wood and their faces had clay masks. In the hand of each idol was a scepter, and behind them was something resembling a shield. The age of the statues is approximately 750 years. The Chimu civilization originated about 1,200 years ago. The capital of Chimu, Chan Chan, remains the largest mud city ever built in the world to this day. This city stretched over an area of almost 40 square kilometers. In ancient times, this metropolis was inhabited by no less than 60,000 people. In the center of Chan Chan, many palaces were built which represent incredible value for contemporary archaeologists. At the end of the 15th century, Chan Chan was captured by the Incas, along with all representatives of the Chimu culture. After the conquest, the city gradually began to lose its significance and soon became completely deserted. The Chimu were a highly developed civilization. Contemporary scientists continue to be amazed by the craftsmanship of making objects from gold and ceramics, as well as the architecture of their buildings. Religion was an important part of the culture for these people. They respected the sun, but the main deity for them was the moon. It is known that the Chimu performed various religious rituals, including sacrifices. Over several years, archaeologists in the Chan Chan area have found more than a hundred remains belonging to children. The extracted heart from the chest indicated that they were victims of rituals. Presumably, the 20 statues found inside the citadel in Chan Chan were also used for conducting a ritual. But which one exactly? Scientists have yet to find the answer to this question. And that's all from me. If you like this video, don't forget to rate it, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell. Your activity is the best reward for me. Thank you for your attention. See you soon. Goodbye.